All right, picture this. Luke Cage, Iron Fist, standing next to each other. Brick wall right in front of them, destroyed. Danny's fist is glowing, real bright. Oh, he's wearing his mask. Them bad guys come right towards The two don't even hesitate. Full-on brawl takes place. Back to back, over and under, swinging and punching and gunning. Then around the corner you see Misty Knight walk in. Diagonal from her, Colleen Wing walks in, swinging the sword, wearing the white jumpsuit. And the four of them badasses f the bad guys up. Shit, that sounds amazing. And this is all on a TV show called, uh, I mean, three little words. Heroes for Hire. What's up, guys? It's Ryder here. How has your day been? How is it going? Now, I've just watched Luke Cage Season 2. I loved it. I really have enjoyed Luke Cage, both seasons in their entirety. But Season 2 in particular, I think I enjoyed even more so. Many reasons, and I'm not going to get into them here. I, that's going to be a separate video. I recommend you subscribe if you want to hear my thoughts on that. They're coming very soon. But part of the reason I love this season of television so much is because this, to me, was a prelude to something that I believe is coming very soon and actually may be announced very soon in a brand new spin-off miniseries called Heroes for Hire. I think it's happening and getting this gut feeling that they're they're going to make some sort of attempt to recreate that that team from the comic books on some sort of Netflix series or some Disney streaming service series. Now yes, episode 10 of Luke Cage season 2 did feature Danny Rand, Iron Fist, Finn Jones reprised the role. It was dope. It was awesome. Super cool to see him back. I really enjoyed his performance. Surprisingly, you're like what you like that yeah it was good i thought it, they worked very well together they both really equally balanced each other out but danny rand's appearance was not the thing that got me thinking about heroes for hire the series no it was the references to luke cage needing money and multiple times criminals asking to hire luke cage to be their hero then though then and yes there will be some spoilers here for luke cage season two the finale of luke cage season two so luke does become kind of the king of Harlem. Now, what does that necessarily mean? We will see in a presumed Luke Cage season three, but kind of the, the idea of, of the being the king of Harlem, it's kind of a metaphoric kind of a hypothetical term uh, that, that doesn't necessarily mean you're ruling Harlem, but you're ruling kind of the underworld, the, the dark shit in Harlem, which is bad, but right? Like, you know, that's, that's not what we want, but It'd be better if Luke Cage did this stuff instead of some other criminal, like a Bushmaster coming in, or some sort of Nightshade coming in, or some, I don't know, another Stokes member, cousin, aunt, or whatever coming in. Like, that's not what we want. We want Luke, the good guy, doing this stuff. And because of that, because Luke now has Harlem's Paradise, it's been given to him by Mariah, we have him having a lot of resources. And specifically, there is that secret room, that, that locked secret room that only certain people can enter if there's a handprint. If you saw the season two, you know what I'm talking about, in the back of Harlem's Paradise. That could easily become a Heroes for Hire hideout. I really want to see Pop's Barbershop kind of like have some sort of underground section. Kind of if you guys saw the Black Lightning show. Kind of like Gamby's shop, how it's the, the tailor shop. And then below, you've got the Black Lightning lair. I think that'd be pretty cool to see something like that in, in you know, Pop's Barbershop. But I don't know if that's going to happen. Of course, if you've got Danny Rand in there, you'll have resources for some hideouts and whatever. But the point I'm trying to make is, at least with the Luke Cage aspect, is now Luke Cage, is he's somewhat of a, a, a boss, right? He's a king. He's got this sweat. Swagger. He feels a little bit more like that Luke Cage from the comic books, the edgier Luke Cage than not the Boy Scout Luke Cage, the one that we've been seeing in the Netflix shows, which I love, we all love, but definitely Luke Cage is an edgier side to him. And honestly, I want to see a Luke Cage season three. I'm being so serious. I want to see what they will do with a, a season three with these specific characters, because I really love this. I think behind Daredevil and Punisher, because I feel like Daredevil and Punisher are tied equally for me, Luke Cage is my second favorite show show uh, kind of obviously third whatever but it's it's right up there with some of my favorite marvel shows and potentially some of my favorite tv shows period and i want to see more of that 
But I also, again, I, I loved getting to see Colleen Wing in, in one episode. I loved getting to see Foggy in one episode. I loved the crossover. I loved all seeing these characters together because they really do mesh and work well together. And if we're not getting a Defender season two, which that's dumb. I don't know who made that decision. That was a stupid thing. Because if they're upset that the Defenders didn't do better than it did, well, here's the solution. Make a season two insane. Have Netflix pump some money into this thing get Fing Fang Foom as the villain, and also give all the characters them suits, and yes, people will respond to a Defender Season 2, but hey, right, I'm not Jeff Loeb, I'm not Marvel, I'm not making these decisions. Anywho, Heroes for Hire is a good response to not having a Defender Season 2, because essentially, it could function just as a Defenders, except you might not have a, you know, Daredevil or Jessica Jones being main characters, you might be focusing only on Luke, Iron Fist, Misty, Colleen, maybe they introduce some other new characters in here. I don't know, maybe they want to do some sort of Black Knight thing. Maybe they want to do a version of Hercules. Black Knight and Hercules are a little bit, you know, outside the realm of Netflix Marvel, but hey, I'm throwing it out there. But of course, they could do literally any iteration of, of the, the Heroes for Hire that they want. Literally any iteration. Now, the, the team of the Defenders that we've been seeing on Netflix, that actually doesn't exist in the comic books. Well, actually, I'm sorry. I take that back. It, it exists in the comic books, but now. It, it exists after the fact that they announced this whole big partnership between Marvel and Netflix back in 2013. Prior to 2013, this group of characters of Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Iron Fist, and, and Luke Cage, that didn't exist, really, in, in the you know a, a sense of that team so they could really kind of create whatever version of heroes for hires that they want that could be a moon knight in there that could be some sort of version of punisher in there i don't know maybe they do maybe they don't that could even be ghost rider in there robbie reyes ghost rider really honestly does fit the same tone as the rest of the marvel netflix heroes and yes you know it's it's a you know demon fire skull thing that's, you know, compared to someone who his fist can light up, right? Like, there's that's a pretty big gap. However, I again, I feel like Robbie would fit, Robbie Reyes, Ghost Rider, would fit in pretty well with this version of Danny and Luke. So my point is, the team-wise, that could exist in, in whatever aspect they, they want. It just feels right. It feels like, like, there were episodes, and they, they actually, they referenced Rand and Danny Rand quite a bit throughout Luke Cage Season 2, which I really enjoyed. But I felt like at times, there was a little bit something missing from Luke Cage season two and if the one thing I would say is missing is a little bit more Danny I feel like they could have based on with the relationship that they made in the Defenders I feel like you could have even sprinkled more cameos from Danny throughout and then had that big lead up to that you know the the episode of of course the Heroes for Hire one episode 10 if you don't want to watch Luke Cage at all I recommend you watch at least episode 10 because it's just awesome the fight sequences felt satisfying and you could build a, a whole show, get Wu Tang a new iter the newer iteration of the Wu Tang Clan, because obviously you know some of the the older crew they're not still part of it, they're not still around. The, yada yada. I mean, it's it, that's the cool thing about Wu Tang. Whatever. We're not talking about Wu Tang Clan. My point is, get Wu Tang Clan 2018 to come here and do some sort of big cool album like Kendrick Lamar did for Black Panther, and base that shit all around Heroes for Hire. And you could again have this whole big mini series, right? This small mini series with Luke Cage and, and Danny Rand learning how to move forward in, in the next set of their powers because that's kind of where we're at right now at least with Luke Cage and I'm assuming at the end of Iron Fist season two you will find Danny at a very similar spot to Luke at the very end of Luke Cage season two the finale episode 13 Luke's sitting in, in Harlem's paradise in the, the the top area of the office wearing this yellow suit looking like a pimp he looks awesome and he's got the weight of the world on his shoulders and it's like he's he feels like he's he's taking one for the team literally he is by doing what he's doing and he doesn't really know his future and i feel like you're gonna see that go with danny and that's one thing that luke cage season two had for it it was this interesting journey for luke but luke actually never finished the journey he never finished his arc at the very end of the, the season he just kind of continued it and it, it furthered into a different direction and i hope that's where danny goes because if they were to do a mini series heroes for hire that's where these journeys could meet. They, they meet at each other. Luke Cage, Danny Rand, Power Man, Iron Fist. They go hand in hand. No pun intended. They do. They work like that. 
again, Luke started to get some ideas for what he could be, right? He, he you know, took upon some of these hired things. Like, you know, when Piranha's like, hey, I want to I wanna hire you to be my hero. And he's like, well, dude, if you want me to be your hero, you want to hire me, the price just doubled. And, like, that's him learning how to play the game and make a business out of it. Because I feel like that's what Luke's going to learn in either Luke Cage Season 3 or, a you know, another season of Iron Fist or another season of Jessica Jones. Like, wherever we're going to see Luke next, you're going to see him learn how to necessarily do the business side of everything. And that will lead to, you know, of course, him working closely with Danny, who is also a businessman, or going to be learning how to be more of a businessman at Rand. I'm very excited for that. I think that's going to really work together well. And I'm really excited for Iron Fist Season 2. Regardless of all the shit that, that happened in Iron Fist Season 1 and all the crap that surrounded it, we're getting a brand new showrunner. It's been confirmed that Iron Fist is going to be getting his suit, which is so cool. Cannot wait for that. And also, I really enjoyed Danny Rand in Luke Cage Season 2, and even the Defenders. And plus, I love Colleen Wing. Who doesn't? And the Dojo thing is going to be cool, and Steel Serpent's probably going to be cool. And there's a lot of other, you know, cool storylines with Iron Fist. Like, some of the coolest ones, like, you know, merging Kun Lun with Earth. Like, the, the realms, like, that would be awesome. I want to see that. I think that would be a really good jumping off point for a Heroes for Hire show. But you guys, let me know your thoughts on Heroes for Hire. Do you think it would work as a TV series? Do you want to see it as a TV series? And if you do... Do you want to see it on Netflix or the Disney streaming service? Let me know. Thank you so much for watching and remember to tune in to the first episode of the brand new series from Infinite Attitude called Paradise. It is coming very, very soon within the next couple of days. Stay tuned for that. Thanks so much for watching and I'm Ryder signing off with Infinite Attitude and goodbye. <laughs>